This is the Tao Trio. I didn't go into super detail with them in my Every Dragon Type Pokemon Explained video because they would have taken however long this video ends up being to properly explain. And that video was already 30 minutes long, so now here is the side note video that covers them in detail. Let's go over their inspirations that made them the way they are. And yes, inspirations is plural. Most know of the yin-yang symbolism after all, they are the Tao Trio. Also, yeah, I know however I pronounce yin-yang, I'm gonna get scrutinized, but I looked it up. It's yin-yang if you're being proper. Yin-yang is just the American-esque way of saying it. I'm an American, so like, either way works. But other than their yin-yang symbolism, they also happen to fit right in with Western magic and mysticism in alchemy. But let's do the more commonly well-known Eastern stuff first, right after the intro. As a very base explanation, there was once an original dragon Pokemon, likely a theropod Allosaurus Tyrannosaurus European dragon mix. It wound up splitting into two when its twin prince trainers wanted to rule the land in very different ways. Though, this split into two caused a third to be born from the remains, which became the wild husk, Qrem. In an interview with Kansugi Mori, the designer of these Pokemon, he mentions how Reshiram and Zekrom are fully opposites. Not only are they black and white, but also Reshiram is stated as being light, airy, and feminine, whereas Zekrom is hard, tough, and masculine. This is even reflected in the names. The middle parts of their names come from the Japanese words for black and white. And then, according to Sugimori, the beginning syllables were chosen based solely on how they sound. Rei sounds soft. Zek sounds hard. Even the full names, Reshiram, flows smoothly. Zekram is harder and more punctual. Kyurem, then, interestingly, is right between the two, starting hard, but ending soft. It also ends with a different ending syllable from the rest. We have Rem, Ram, and Rom. The rest of Qrem's name pulls from Japanese words meaning cold, rapid freezing, snow, and nothing which is important for later. Now, the concept of yin and yang comes from Taoism and are directly referenced in the Japanese species categories of these Pokemon. You know, like how Pikachu is the mouse Pokemon, Reshiram is the white yang Pokemon in Japanese, and Zekrom the black yin Pokemon. And even their battle music in-game is named after this fact, blazing white yang and electrifying black yin. Now, to fully explain yin and yang is to explain a whole religion, so I'll link a video that I think does that explanation justice in a short amount of time right here and in the description, but I'll also try a bit myself. The entire universe is filled with and made up of various energies. These determine whether something is yin or yang, but they are usually directly connected. Say, someone's back versus their front. A village on the east side of a mountain versus a village on the west side. The heads of a coin versus the tails of a coin. The male powers and the female powers. And even if something is yin or yang, it always has the potential to become the other. Thus the opposing colored dots in the symbol. The water of a smooth flowing river can become a rapid waterfall. The sunlight hitting your face can become the sunlight hitting your back if you just turn around. The way the linked video puts it, in a way that a lot of Westerners can understand easier, is that you could sort of think of it as the dark side and light side of the Force. Luke and Vader. Vader has the potential to move to the other side, and he does in the movie. And similarly, Luke also has the potential to follow in his father's footsteps to the dark side. These beliefs are sort of what inspired Star Wars. Many have pointed out the Taoist symbology used in Star Wars as even the users of the light side of the Force are imperfect, and even, as a whole, do some pretty dark things. You always have the potential to change, and the two sides wouldn't even exist without each other, and they have parts of each other. It's a constant flow, because life isn't black and white. Which gets into Reshiram and Zekrom's roles as the Pokemon of Truth and the Pokemon of Ideals. Their twin prince trainers wanted to rule the kingdom under those ideologies and fought for power. 
Only later did they realize the answer was somewhere in the middle. Because life isn't black and white. <coughs> or red and blue. <coughs> Both ways of ruling have their pros and cons. And if we went with the natural flow of the universe instead of filling our lives with complications and being stubborn about our ways, then... Well, life would be a lot easier and more peaceful, wouldn't it? Then there is also Qurem, which symbolizes Wuji, which is the absence of yin or yang. It's cold and empty. It's nothing. Thus, nothing being referenced in its name. Its life is meaningless, so it searches for meaning. It searches for warmth, and thus goes after truth or ideals. Reshiram or Zekrom, based on the version of the game you get. For most people, the inspirations seem to end there. It's done! That's all it is! Yin-Yang. There's nothing, nothing more. To some people, it's difficult to comprehend that a design can be inspired by multiple things at the same time. And even if the second inspirational source was the designer's main one, some people won't accept that as a thing at all, because it's the second thing that they heard. It's different from what they heard first, so it's wrong. You humans are... Us humans are so stubborn. Should get some Taoism in ya. So what is this second bit of inspiration? Well, if you remember my Alchemy The End series from uh, three years ago. Crap, that was three years ago! I was so plump and edgy! People really do always hate their past selves, don't they? What's important here is that I am referring to how alchemy, real world, magic, and mysticism is a major source of inspiration for Pokemon, especially legendary Pokemon. This peaked in Gen 7, but is also referenced in Gen 4 and 6, and as you'll soon see, even 5. Alchemy likes to use a lot of symbolism, and will often use planets or gods or animals to represent things like elements or processes. And most of the time, it was common to use animals, both real ones and mythical ones, for use in their symbolism. Now, similar to how yin-yang is opposites, but they each have a part of each other, in Western alchemy there are the two contraries, represented by a white fluffy dragon with two wings, and a black scaly dragon with four limbs. They too are opposites, but would not exist without each other. And while creative liberties were definitely taken, such as giving the black scaly dragon wings in Zekrom, and giving the white fluffy dragon bottom legs with Reshiram, the inspiration is still obvious! I mean, this is also probably why Zekrom has its wings separate from its limbs. That way it still has just four limbs to reference this. Then we can also look to Reshiram, whose claws are a part of its wings, to sort of imply it doesn't have arms, it has wings. Like this. So what are the two contraries? What are these magical creatures symbolizing? Well, they are Sophic Mercury and Sophic Sulfur. Sophic meaning a sort of spiritual wisdom. They are philosophical. Sophic can also mean the transferring of wisdom from spoken word to written word. It can also refer to a more scientific approach to spirituality, which is basically what alchemy was. It's spirit science. By specifying Sophic Mercury, it means not just Mercury, the element, but also all of the wisdom involved in it, the planet that symbolizes it, and the spiritual or magical power inherent to it. It can also refer to a specific mercury amalgam, one mixed with antimony and silver. It was believed by some alchemists that doing this would further bring out the powers of mercury. Thus it was sulfic mercury, and the same is applied to sulfur as well. But back to the two contraries as a whole, they are beasts which fight because they are opposites, yet they complete each other. Again, like yin-yang. But they are also described as active and passive. Which could refer back to the inspirations of what these Pokémon symbolize truth and ideals. Those who believe in a world of truth tend to be more passive. The world is the way it is. Let's base our decisions and beliefs on reality here. And just to ruin the comment section by bringing up politics, this tends to be the conservative's way of thinking. Whereas, if you believe in making a world of ideals, you tend to be more active in pursuing those ideals. We must strive for the ideal world. Let's base our decisions and beliefs on what could be an ideal world. This tends to be the more liberal way of thinking. Have fun in the comments section. These two ways of thinking, these two ways of life, need each other to exist and keep each other in check. Which gets right into their philosophy of truth and ideals and yin and yang. And even the two contraries. 
Both of them are required for souls to exist, according to alchemy. They are what grants us free will and awareness. They're what allow us to even make our own choices to begin with. Which, again, again, is the whole life lesson moral of the story thing of Gen 5. Life isn't black and white. I mean, it's the theme song of the dang anime. Oh, and also these two elements are two parts of what would make the Philosopher's Stone. No biggie. But now again, QRAM comes and messes things up. Right? Well, no. Just like how it's Wuji in the Yin Yang symbolism, QRAM also fits perfectly into the alchemic symbolism as the representative of Sophic Salt. The three of them together making what in alchemy is known as the three essentials. Salt, sulfur, and mercury. Basically, the three parts that when combined, make up what is a soul, or can be recombined to make a Philosopher's Stone. So hear me out, because this gets a bit complicated. The three essentials are said to be the child of the two essentials. The three wouldn't exist without the two. The three, the third one, comes from the two. This works out as Qrim came from the splitting of Reshiram and Zekrom, from the original dragon. And it double works out because while these two dragons are depicted as the two contraries, when you merge them with the three essentials, it's depicted as this. A strange... what is called a dragon. It's a three-headed dragon. Honestly, the strangest dragon I've ever seen, but that's what it says it is. So, an original dragon that splits into three and an original dragon that splits into three. And we're still not even done. These essentials all interact with each other in various ways. The two contraries bash and clash, but complete each other. But in the process of merging the three essentials, you need to use the other essential, salt, in order to freeze the mercury and sulfur together, in order to ground them. Now what type is QRM? And heck, what was Getsus's plan in Black 2 and White 2? To freeze the whole region, including Reshiram and Zekrom, to gain total control over it. The symbolism works at every layer. So are you really gonna argue that Yin Yang is the only inspiration of these Pokémon? Most Pokémon mix more than one thing together in their design. The ones that don't are commonly panned for being boring and uninspired. It's just a seal with a horn! It's just a freaking dog! And to make this all come together, most Gnostic alchemists, come to think of it, believed in ways very similar to Taoism, but with the Western kick. Western religions like Christianity teach that Jesus and God are the ultimate good, and Satan and his demons are the ultimate evil. It is black and white. But Gnostic alchemists did believe in the Judeo-Christian God and his powers, however, not that he was a single entity of ultimate good. Rather, God, it, was a force of light of the universe, and Satan a force of darkness. Neither of them is 100% black or white, and they both influence us to act in different ways, even in writing books in the Bible. It's the light, natural flow of the universe compelling people, rather than a floating dude with wings coming down and whispering things into people's ears to write down. All in all, Gnostic alchemists did believe in the Judeo-Christian God, but with a sort of Taoist twist. Which is why a lot of alchemy involves symbols and religious flair. God is a force to them, like electricity or mana, and forces can be harnessed and used to transmutate stuff. Thus, metaphysics and things like that was born. Spirit science. It's really interesting stuff, thinking about the way people think. Now just imagine that I have a really nice conclusion paragraph here. Ultimately, you decide for yourself what you want to think. This is technically just theoretical. Maybe this Tao Trio connection to alchemy really is just a good coincidence. A really good coincidence. Anywho, until next time, you never stop using your noggin. This has been Dragon Month. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out all of the other dragon videos we did this month, and stay tuned because next month is Fairy Month. Oh man, could you imagine if I had Fairy Month be this month? Pride Month?
I'd be in so much trouble. <laughs>